Well, I hope this video doesn't get flagged because this is the dirtiest video we've ever made. Dirty because these cars behind us are filthy. This is not how we plan to make this review. But nothing stops us. <laughs> nothing stops us to bring you content. And today it's a comparison. We went through lots of records, by the way, this year. We went record heat, record floods, and now record cold. It's almost minus 20 degrees. But before we start, there's one record or milestone that you could help us with. And that is we're pretty close to getting 100,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, just hit that subscribe button. If you already have subscribed, thank you so much. And share with other people, tell them to subscribe because we'd really like to hit that number. It's been uh, a long time coming. So anyway, Cynthia, tell us what we have today for our comparison. I got a 2022 Kia Sorento PHEV. And I have the 2022 Hyundai Santa Fe PHEV. This is gonna be a really interesting comparison. Yeah, I can't stop sweating because my cheeks are freezing. Let's get started. <laughs> it's so cold out here. Let's go. <laughs> Both Sorrento and Santa Fe are based on the same platform. Sorrento is a bit longer. It's about 25 millimeters longer, and the wheelbase is about 50 millimeters longer. Then there you get LED headlights and tail lights, and also 19 inch wheels. I like Sorrento styling more because it's more edgy and modern to me. At the back, I really like the new Kia logo and also the hidden rear wiper. One nice thing about it is also for winter like this, it doesn't get frizzed up like a regular exposed wiper at the back. It comes with a hands-free power tailgate, but one thing I don't like is the buttons hidden down all the way down here. It's just a little bit unnatural. Once it opens up, you can see there's plenty of room there. The third row, once you put it down, you can put a large, very popular travel suitcase in there. It's easy to load in and up. And there's a dedicated lock button. We did have a chance to test the new Santa Fe Hybrid a couple months ago. If you haven't watched that video where we compared it with the Hyundai Tucson Hybrid, I'll leave a link down below. But in that video, I did uh, say that I'm a fan of this new front end of the Santa Fe. I think it looks very, very classy and I think it's a design that's gonna age very, very well. Especially this really highly textured grill. Uh, I love this T-style, uh, LED lighting system, so you do get standard LED uh, headlamps as well as tail lights on this Hyundai Santa Fe. One thing though I do like better on the Sorento is the emblem. I think that new emblem is really, really cool. And um, I think it's about time Hyundai changed their emblem up there. Uh, onto the side, you have 19 inch standard wheels as well. Now. The Sorento is a little bit longer and has a little bit longer wheelbase. However, this Santa Fe actually rides about a couple inches higher for ground clearance. You can visually see the difference and that might make a difference when you are in um, you know, snowy conditions like this. On the backside, one thing that is different from the hybrid or the regular gasoline engines of both the Santa Fe and the Sorento is you do have a charge port. We'll talk about charging in a bit. Now let's go over to the back. Here you have a tidy, nice looking back end. You have a nice light treatment here, LED, as I mentioned. You'll see this comes standard with H-Track all wheel drive and this says plug in here. Now, one thing I'm not a fan of that I like more than the Sorento is I love how uh, that one, they actually hid the rear wiper. This one is fully exposed and before filming today, I had to chip away at all of the ice that was basically uh, sticking this wiper onto the window and it would have actually been much nicer if it was hidden up there. Uh, but my handle, I do have a power tailgate and it's hands-free as well. So if you have the key fob with you and you just have it activated, you stand by here after three beeps, it comes up or you can do it manually. My lever is right in a natural position though. Up it comes, 
So you'll notice that there's similar room to the Sorrento here other than that one has a third row. However, one big difference though, this one here, there is a panel that opens up and there are three large and fairly deep compartments under that floor. And it's really handy. I did make a Costco trip and it's very handy to put things that roll around all the time, put them under there, regardless if you actually even use the floor to cover it up or not. It's just a nice separation uh, for your goods and that is a big plus there. In Canada, we only get two trim levels of the plug-in Santa Fe, and that's the preferred and then the luxury trim. We don't get the super high uh, trim like the ultimate package that we have um, in Canada. In the US, that's a limited package, and that's very unfortunate. Um, so this one, it also has, to close it, you have the one button. It does not have the lock button that the Sorento has. I'm not sure if you got the ultimate, if that would come with that lock button or not. I'm a fan of that button. So, Anyways, let's close it up. Let's get driving. Let's get warm. Okay, first up, we are in the Sorrento PHEV. Let's start, how about on the inside? Yes. The inside is very modern. I think they did a great job. Last year, they had a redesign of the whole Sorrento. And this PHEV version is just icing on the cake. Yeah, it's, it's really not much different than the gasoline version. Even on the outside, you get a little badging and the, that extra, the, the extra outlet for the plug. But uh, yeah, it's modern. Uh, this is the top of the line trim. Depending on where you live, check with your local Kia listing because we're in Canada, uh, so our trims may be a little bit different. They might be called something different as well. So the top trim here, uh, we get uh, the max screen sizes here. We get a 12.3 inch digital cluster and we get a 10.25 inch multimedia display. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto come standard with this as well. We have the, your favorite feature? A round view or surround view monitor, as Kia calls it. And this one is also equipped with the blind spot monitor system. So when you hit that signal, it actually displays the image on right the on display. There. Yeah, so that is really, really nice. But yeah, a nice modern feel. I, I do find there is quite a bit of hard plastic uh, in this interior here. And what's kind of neat though, this, this hard plastic on the side here, it actually lights up. It doesn't look like it, it, it's even translucent, but it, light does come through there, so it is quite there, nice. Yeah, there's a very welcome feeling once you get into the car. There's a very gentle, soft, welcoming music and kicks in with the ambient light. Yeah, yeah it's very spa-like. Uh, speaking of you know comfort uh, and spa-like, uh, this top trim, we get uh, leather seats, full leather, heated and ventilated in the front, heated in the rear. Uh, we have uh, sunshades, a large panel roof as well. And um, yeah, it, it is very, very comfortable, very roomy. Now this- I, I do like the dial button better though. Yeah, this has a dial for your transmission selector. Uh, we get a push button on the Santa Fe, which we will uh, see shortly. Now, uh, seating wise, let's talk about that. Well, this does not have as much of a roomy space, but there's one thing this has, Santa Fe doesn't, is a third row. Yes, it does have three rows, which is, you know, pretty special in this class of vehicle. Uh, in a pinch, if you need to, to carry some extra passengers, you can put that third row uh, up. Now, one thing to note though, in North America, only comes as a six passenger vehicle. So it's two, two and two. So we have two captain's seats in the second row. In other markets, I believe you can get a bench for that second row, making this a seven passenger vehicle, which is a big bonus. If you need the storage room with all the seats down and the Sorrento offers you more room to wiggle. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, more cargo room than the Santa Fe with all the seats down. Okay, now to the drive. Under the hood, we have a gasoline engine. It's a 1.6 liter turbocharged four-cylinder and that is matched to a, a, a single electric motor on this and we have a 13.8 kilowatt hour lithium-ion polymer battery so total horsepower is 261 and torque is 258 pound-feet and the nice thing about this PHEV 
it's matched to a six-speed automatic transmission. A lot of other PHEVs use a CVT or an eCVT, so it's like a single gear, similar like to the, the RAV4 has, or the RAV4 Prime, I mean. Now everybody wants to know, what is the EV range of this PHEV? It is? 51 kilometers or 32 miles. Yes, 51 or 32, that's pretty decent. Uh, and one thing to note though, this has a fairly small gas tank though. It's 47 liters, it's around 12 gallons or so. So you will be making more, uh, trips to the pump a little bit more often because it doesn't have a, a really, really big tank. Now there's one thing to note. First of all, this drivetrain is very similar. It's essentially the same between the two vehicles. They share everything together. There is something about this system that we are not huge fans of. You know, so some PHEVs, for instance, uh, we drove the RAV4 Prime uh, not too long ago. They operate just like an EV, right? So, you know, you, you start it up, and you, let's say it says 51 kilometers of range. You can drive 51 kilometers um, uh, normal driving without that gasoline engine kicking on at all and, uh, we, and we proved that with the RAV4 Prime. Other PHEVs like this one and the Santa Fe, they don't operate quite like that. Uh, it's more of like a real enhanced hybrid system so when it needs extra power or when it's cold out uh, it'll kick on that gasoline engine. Another thing, this does not have a charge hold feature. Some other PHEVs uh, you can hold your charge. For instance, we're on the highway right now. Maybe we don't want to use up our battery for the highway. We want to save it because we're going to go into some rush hour traffic or some city traffic and we can hold that charge. This does not have the ability to do that. But we do have different drive modes on here. We have, um, I'm going to switch it for you here, Cynthia. We have Eco, we have Sport. We go sport, every, you can, oh, yeah, everything it's very kicks. More responsive it's now. way more responsive, of course. It's gonna use more of that gasoline engine, and then we can go into smart, which is kind of like it's gonna just sense what you're doing and uh, adjust for that. We also have uh, terrain mode, so we can go snow, we have mud, and we have sand. And we are lucky enough with this crazy weather that we've been having, we've actually had quite a bit of snow, and we were able to use this in the snow. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so normally you know, in the West Coast, we don't get to try out the snow very much, but um, it worked really great. What would you think? I agree on that and I feel very grounded and very comfortable driving in snow, which normally I don't. <laughs> yeah, you know, with the all-wheel drive, which is standard on both vehicles, um, you know, it's that with combined with good winter tires, this thing, it really hooked up. We tried it uh, several times and, you know, a decent amount of snow. We floored it. We put our foot to the floor. <laughs> and, you know, if you look at these images in real time and slow motion, you can see how much wheel slippage there is. It, it's not a lot. It catches it really, really quick. So, you know, rest assured, seriously, if, you, if you're wanting a vehicle and you're wondering how good this is for, you know, bad, bad winter weather, this does do a very, very good job. Yeah, both vehicles offer great driving experience, nothing exciting, but a super, serves everyday drive perfectly. Yeah. I have no complaint. Charging wise, it's gonna take you about three and a half hours with a level two, 240 charger, or if you wanna just plug it into your wall outlet in your garage at home, uh, it's basically overnight, it's about 10 and a half hours. The nice thing about it though is, uh, on both vehicles, when you plug that charger in, and you lock the vehicle, it locks the charger as well. So no one can go and steal your charger from you there. Mileage wise, it's gonna be very, very good. The combined rating is 3.1 liters equivalent per 100 kilometers, and that's 75 miles per gallon equivalent. Um, and that's, of course, gonna depend on the type of driving that you're gonna do. And you know, if you're gonna do a, a lot of shorter trips and use the EV range mostly every day, well, that's probably gonna drop that number down even more. The Sorento starts just under 45,000 and this one we are testing SX starts just under 55,000. Now these are Canadian dollars so check with your local market um, you know for if you're in the US it's going to be uh, actually less money so that's even a big bonus for you. Um, so uh, one thing to also note is that you may qualify 
when you buy one of these PHEVs for government incentives and rebates because it has a certain size uh, battery and this one in Canada it qualifies for both provincial and federal rebates so check with your uh, local state laws well, a lot of you might think, why am I not talking a lot on this review? The reason why is because I have been super busy uh, doing all the holiday stuff. A lot of uh, getting presents ready for the friends, family, and lots of baking and cooking, and of course, taking care of those little rascals. Um, <laughs> hey, now let's get to the Santa Fe. All right. We're off into the Hyundai Santa Fe PHEV now. Now here's a very good example of what we were talking about. We're in here. I'm going to hit the start button. Okay, I have the climate control off. It says ice possible, drive with care. All right, so we're gonna hit drive. Off we go. Now, I'm not gonna keep it, uh, the climate control off for very long because it's really cold out, but I just wanna, show you what we are talking about. So often, this gas engine will kick on if you use the climate control. So right now we're in a nice silent EV mode. This is perfect for our short trips. And we're showing 46 kilometers of range. I can turn on the climate control. There we go, tachometer just went, gasoline engine just kicked on. And the problem with that is that on the short trips, it's really gonna burn a lot more fuel. And even if we turn off the climate control, the gasoline engine stays on uh, for quite a long time. So, you know what? To me, that just kind of bothers me for a PHEV. This kind of feels like more like a, a real enhanced hybrid opposed to, you know, a real, like a, an electric vehicle and a hybrid, which some vehicles are. Cynthia, what do you think? I agree with you on this one uh, because we do a lot of short trips back and forth. As when we were filming, um, we want to keep the car running, uh, has a heat sound, and, uh, but the gas engine just stays on and uh, it just defeats the whole purpose of having the EV. Yeah, you know, but it does save fuel and there are advantages to even this style of PHEV, even if the gasoline engine is kicking on. Number one is you can go in the HOV lane with a single occupant. Number two, it does save money. It does get really good fuel economy. It would just be better fuel economy if you can just stay straight in EV mode. And, and the other thing is that depending on where you live, it might qualify for a lot of government incentives as well. On the inside of the Santa Fe, it is quite different from the Sorrento. Uh, what do you think, Cynthia? This is a little bit more traditional looking. Um, to me, it's a little bit out of style. <laughs> okay, call me old then, because I don't think, I think it actually looks a lot more elegant than, than the Sorrento. The Sorrento has a lot of hard plastic on the front dash. Uh, this has all soft touch. It, it looks, it feels like leather. I don't think it is, but it feels like it is. Uh, the Sorrento has, that, you know, just that kind of hard plastic everywhere. Uh, one thing that I do prefer in the Sorento though, it does have the dial selector for the transmission selector. This has the push button selector. Not a fan of push button uh, gear shifts at all. You got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto on this eight inch multimedia screen. We have a digital uh, gauge cluster here that comes standard. Now in Canada, we don't get the top trim as we mentioned earlier of the Santa Fe. So the luxury trim only gets this eight inch. However, in the US, you have the limited trim where you get the the 10.25 inch multimedia uh, display and we don't get that here. And one other thing that you get in the US on that top trim that we do not get here in Canada, and this is very, very unfortunate, Cynthia's favorite feature is the surround view monitor. The surround view or the surround view monitor. You can't even get it as an option to add on to this luxury package in Canada. So that is really, really unfortunate. But you can get that uh, in the US in the top trim. However, the center fee does offer more front and second row space. Yeah, leg room. If you are a taller passenger, for sure, 
um, like you know, like say well over six foot tall, I would definitely go with the Santa Fe because there is so much leg room up here, and that is something to be uh, taken into consideration. For you know, some people have that tall problem, I guess. <laughs> if that's a problem, I don't know. So. <laughs> Overall, I like the interior of it, even though Cynthia thinks it's dated. You have this large, large panoramic roof. I like this bridge style console here. Uh, everything's easy to use and yeah, it drives pretty well the same as the Sorento PHEV. So let's go wrap it up. All right, for the final verdict, which one would we choose? Drum roll. <laughs> Hands are in the pocket yeah. because it's too cold. <laughs> too cold. Okay, if it were our money and we had to choose between these two, we would choose the Kia Sorento PHEV. Mainly because, uh, first of all, it has more utility because you have a little bit more room if you need maximum amount of room and you actually have the third row if you want to carry that extra passenger to make it a six passenger vehicle and of course um, th this one's available in the higher trim level in canada in the u.s you can get the higher trim level the limited in the santa fe but not here in canada so that's kind of a, a bummer you know what's also interesting though this segment is really popular you know an suv and the one to look out for if you're not in a hurry to buy a a, a PHEV a plug-in hybrid SUV you might want to wait because coming is the new Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV and that's rumored to have a much larger battery almost twice the range and we'll see when, when we get it yeah. you know like if it actually operates like a true EV for all those kilometers uh, for those EV kilometers not like these ones do and that, that's one thing that's kind of a downer for both uh, these vehicles we would love it that if we could drive purely. <coughs> <coughs> it's too cold <laughs> purely on ev yeah we would love it if we could drive purely on ev for those set kilometers that's right so anyways hope you enjoyed the review see you on the next everyday review ciao ciao let's go inside yes